since the virus began, it seems like that the weather, at least where we live, has been extraordinarily glorious. Maybe we just notice it more because we're not so busy doing whatever it was that we were busy doing before all of this began. Summer rains have poured down in torrents almost every evening. And after that, coming out of the most beautiful fluffy clouds that were black and dark and threatening, still almost every evening, beautiful double rainbows have been appearing. These are signs of promise, say the poets. Signs of hope, say the prophets. We need the hope in these days, goodness knows, don't we? As we consider all that this world is enduring in its magnitude, not just the virus, but also the comorbidities of hunger and violence and racism and injustice and detention and hatred all around us, as well as the endurance that is required for the quiet desperation that we and the people all around us are experiencing just to get through the day. There's a beautiful hymn with a provocative title, Let Us Hope When Hope Seems Hopeless. Yeah, that it seems good to do that. It seems like the most life-giving choice these days. Why not hope even when hope seems hopeless? Years ago, our family gathered for a family reunion at a rental cottage in South Carolina that was situated right on the Tidal Creek. I stayed on the creek almost the whole week. I mean, I love the family, but the creek was fascinating. It was a beautiful place that was filled with mud flats teeming with fiddler crabs and egrets and these miraculous leaping mullets that we have here at the beach too, silvery and twisting in the beautiful surfaces of the black waters meandering through the grasses. Both sides of the road were covered with these waterways and the grasses that meandered through them. The road continued on down beyond our house for only like a quarter of a mile. And then there was a barricade and the barricade had a sign on it that said, stop, road ends. That happens at the shore fairly regularly that one would see a road that just stops. And it happens, as it turns out, in life as well. The way that we had been traveling, the way we had expected to go, what we had planned, the road of life, it just veers off to the right or it goes to the left or it just ends. Moments, long stretches of time when you and I come bumping up against a sign, road ends, and yet we have to go on. We have to turn. Shel Silverstein in his poem puts it this way, there is a place where the sidewalk ends and before the street begins. And I think we really are there now. I think that's, that's safe to say. And I wonder if it is where the sidewalk ends when we have come as far as we can. Perhaps it is there when hope will veer us off so that we may begin a bit of a new pilgrimage. A new pilgrimage that will take us off the map, has taken us off the map. The scriptures are full of passages about hope and about where it takes us. Beautiful poetry in the Psalms and prophecies that look to the new day when God's promises will be realized. Times when Metaphorically speaking, flowers will bloom in the desert, streams of goodness will flow, the sicknesses and the suffering will all be healed. We will finally live in a beautiful, healthy landscape. We will finally be willing to offer to one another grace 
and forgiveness and reparation and justice and compassion in peace. Consistently it was and is that the prophets and the poets are the ones who write these words of hope. In the old days, those words appeared in psalms and scriptures and prayers, and today, too, they are appearing all around us in new songs, in legislation, in demands, in essays, in poems and protests, large as life and death, letters that are etched into the very roadways, into the streets, as if painted with blood which in many ways they are. Hope. Hope, Alice Walker writes, hope is a woman who has lost her fear along with her home, her employment, her parents, her olive trees, her grapes, the peace of independence, the reassuring noise of ordinary neighbors. And though Walker wrote that poem many years ago, for a different time and a different type of injustice, its clarion, insistent cries remind us that as yet, that hope is not completely realized. There is not yet a path through the wilderness. There is reasonable doubt and hope seems far away. And yet, says the psalmist, we put our hope in you, O God, for we shall yet praise. We shall yet praise. The poet persists. Hope rises. She always does. Did we fail to notice this? in all the stories they've tried to suppress. Hope is faith that cannot be proven. Hope that lives and breathes beyond what is currently experienced. It is evidence of possibility, says the passage in Hebrews. It is the essence of life that while it has order and predictability also has within it the seeds of serendipity that sprout surprises all along the way. And I don't know about you, but the longer I live and the more I ponder it, the more I believe that the poet Emily Dickinson had it right when she wrote, hope is the thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. Because truthfully, haven't there been, especially lately, more than a few days when hope had no words? So then hope sometimes sings the tune without the words, sometimes hums in the background, and sometimes, well, hope cusses. I'm convinced, I'm convinced that hope sometimes cusses. Hope sings a while and cries a while, and sometimes a long while and cusses a while, and then sits persistently in silence. What if hope and healing and rebirth and restoration are not out there somewhere in the future when all of this is over about which we are now fantasizing, when we might pick up everything and put this awful year behind us like a bad dream, but what if Hope is rising right now in the middle of the desert and the depression and the death. Not in a facile way, but in the heart's core at that place beyond which 
the roads of life usually lead us. At least the place where those roads have led us in the past. What if that is where hope rises? Where the road ends? It occurred to me the other day, one of those really hard days. I'm sure you have those. What if hope rises? She always does because that is what God with us actually is. You know, Emmanuel, God with us. What if that is what Jesus came to bring, comes to bring? What if that's what the prophets and the bodhisattvas have taught us? That's what the civil rights heroes and the courageous people today who refuse to quit are embodying in their very souls and spirits is hope. And what if hope rises is a spiritual practice deeper than the power of positive thinking because sometimes I can't manage that. Can you? Though the power of positive thinking might be part of hope on those really good days. But I often wonder if hope is the Holy One breathing in us, in all of life, God with us, in us, even when we're not feeling it. Because let's face it, many of us are not feeling it very much these days, hope. Oh. Maybe hope is what Paul meant when he said, whether we live or whether we die, we belong to God. And that that is the most hopeful thing we can say. Hope rises. She always does. My friend Julie the other day, when her test for COVID-19 came back positive, posted a photo of a courageous golden flower pushing through a crack in the road. And so I put a real flower near me when I pray for her and for all of those who are suffering and scared and exhausted and beyond sad because that flower brings me hope. Hope shows up in rainbows and the water and chocolate and the sweet faces that are flickering on the infernal computer screen. Hope shows up in my cat assistant, Oliver, my cat assistant who sleeps faithfully by me in my bedroom office while I work. That's how he assists me. He sleeps on the bed by me while I work. Hope rises and every now and then Oliver rises too for a rare stretch and a caress of his nose on my cheek. The prophets teach us that faith is the evidence of things hoped for, the assurance of those things that we have not seen in a long, long time, maybe ever. So faith and hope show up together sometimes, I think. Hope is the proof that can't be proven. Faith is what we sob or cuss out of our contorted faces. When hope seems to have left the building and we just can't believe anymore that she could possibly rise. Faith reminds us that she always does. Hope is what wakens us and helps us get up in these mornings that feel like Groundhog Day when it is just too hard. When we have learned gradually how to stay in the moment. I sure am learning how to do that, are you? I don't like learning it. But I am learning it, and some days I even sort of like it. 
I'm learning to find the flower in the cracks, the lizards that move up the trees, the hope in the black cloud, not just the rainbow, the joy of the storm that is there, and then it actually passes by. Hope is not putting on a fake smile and pretending like we're okay. Life is full of realizations these days that sometimes we are not okay and that our finest, most hoped, hope-filled choices feel really far off. Because the powers that be are still subjugating others. Greed and hatred are still rampant and strong. The virus is spreading, at least in Florida, and we still, and we still have hope-filled choices down the long pilgrim's path. We need the poets and the songs and the creation and prayers of others that actually, for real, change energy and actually offer help that we cannot see. And we need reminders of God's love and we need to remember to help others to help hope rise. I have a plaque in my office that says, hold firmly to the thought that each one of us can do something to bring some portion of the misery to an end. And I really believe that. I hope you believe that too. I also believe it is important for us to offer all that we can to sustain our own hope and to sustain the hope of other people. We can choose to speak and to live peaceful, inclusive, gentled, life-affirming hope, even when we're not feeling it. We can choose to care for the creation, to search for and experience life's beauty, to look up, to listen to the birds, to look for the helpers, as Mr. Rogers taught us, to turn off the news for your own health when it becomes too hard, to remember to play, to do a puzzle, to engage in a game, to watch something funny, to read, to listen, to do something that is just for you, that will nurture your hope. It will help you and you will be able to help others get through the next hard thing. Will the road continue? Will the journey get easier? Will all these circumstances resolve? Can we fix everything in time? Well, maybe, but maybe not. Hope is not a guarantee, is it? It's not a guarantee that justice or resolution will happen, but it is absolutely true that change is more assured than anything else. And even though it may seem like it most days, we are not, truthfully, we are not living Groundhog Day. Evolution, change, tomorrow is actually hope rising. That life evolves may be God's most important and hopeful gift. In some way that I can't really explain or define, I really believe you and I are all capable of bringing and being catalysts of hope in this world, no matter what bad thing has happened to us, and no matter how limited we may feel like we are. You know what, I didn't know that, really know that. I mean, intellectually, I kind of got it. But I didn't really know that until my mom was dying from the effects of dementia. And she brought to me a hope that was beyond cognition and even beyond speech. Hope springs 
and floats and rises and changes things in me, in you, inside and outside and in the world. Hope may be where love goes when the sidewalk ends. But hope and faith are not cosmic credit cards where if we do everything right, then we're going to get something right in return. No, hope is its where the road ends. What lies beyond is where trust and faith kick in. And that old song, Come, O Fount of Every Blessing, has these words. Here I pause in my sojourning. Hither, thanks for having come. Come to trust at every turning. God will safely guide me home. Hope takes us the distance beyond the clinical trials, beyond the place where we can go into the hospital room or take care of someone we love anymore. Hope goes beyond the moment in which we can give birth or change somebody's mind or comfort them. It goes beyond that moment in which we wonder whether or not our lives have any meaning and whether or not we've made any definable difference beyond that. Where the road ends, that's where hope is. And the beloved one, the own of peace, God is there in the distance beyond where we can go and rising hope rises she always does in the essential heart of the matter and holds us here and there beyond amen I invite you now to receive this benediction that is based upon some beautiful words from the book of Romans. So would you be blessed with these words? May the God who always rises fill you with all joy and peace as you are learning to trust so that you may overflow with love and joy and hope by the power of the Holy Spirit around and within you, now and always. May it be so for you.